Hi, welcome. I'm Maria from Read Fine Books, and today we are talking about the curiously curated book tag. It, this tag is an original tag by Flossie at the Grape Jelly Library. And if you don't know her channel, head over there. She has the most amazing aesthetic content and wonderful reviews. And she has created this great tag and tagged me a long time ago, I think it's two months ago, but I am sorry I have not been able to do it until now. So uh, now let's get into it. First question, what's in a name? If a book were to be written about your life, what would the title be? And I have already thought about this because it's kind of a difficult question to evaluate your life and see uh, what exactly is most fitting. So uh, I think I think the book that would define my life is Pride and Prejudice. And I say that because firstly it is my favorite book and secondly I think I married Mr. Darcy. My husband is the most amazing man and uh, meeting him, the way our story began, it's very very fitting. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Pride and Prejudice and um, of course we don't know what happens to Darcy and Lizzie after they get married but I bet uh, uh, our life would resemble that too. So moving on to question number two. Oops is a four-letter word. Have any of your books fallen victim to tragedy and what factor played a part in your book's demise? Well, I haven't really had any tragedies around my books. I take really good care of them. Um, however, the worst that has happened to some of my books is that I have lent them to people and never gotten them back and that is always always something i hate and if you ever do that to somebody who loves books uh, take a book and never give it back just know that these persons me included love every one of our books and do remember we have lent you one and you have never given it back we remember everything, so be aware. <laughs> the third question. Tell me all about it. How do you personally feel about DNFing a book? And what effect, if any, does it have on you? I, I don't like DNFing. I feel it's uh, kind of a bit uh, disrespectful toward uh, the, the author. I choose very carefully what I read and uh, I always suppose that if I can't read something it is a bit my fault that I can't get into it, that it's not the right uh, headspace that I'm in or the right moment for me. So I don't consider DNFing when abandoning a book, I consider it uh, more like deferred reading because I will get to that book again. I, I like to finish something that I start. Perhaps not in that moment, but I will get back to that book. It is actually something very, very rare to DNF something to to really not be able to read it. It has to be an awful, a very awful book. However, if I choose, if I actually choose to DNF something, I, I don't overthink it either. It doesn't affect me in any way. Next, the sound of silence. It is said that silence is golden when reading a book. Can you comprehensively read amongst the chaos and chatter or do you require a hushed atmosphere? 
I actually enjoy classical music while reading. I find it very relaxing. Uh, if there are many references in a book uh, about music, I actually search for those for those um, tunes and listen to them. I have done that in uh, a book here on this channel I reviewed. Uh, I think it's called Hook, Line and Sinker. That book uh, has, has so many music references and they are all good. They are all from the 80s and 70s and 90s, all kind of rock and, rock and roll or uh, sea shanties, which I hadn't had any idea it was a thing, but apparently it is. <laughs> And uh, I actually made um, a playlist with that uh, music and uh, I think it is a great, great playlist to listen to. If you ever read that, that book, you should go through the playlist. It will put you in the most perfect atmosphere ever. And a while back, when I was in high school and I didn't have internet, I used to have CDs and, um, for example, and I listened to Simply Red over and over while reading Agony and Ecstasy by Irving Stone. And now whenever I hear a tune by Simply Red, I always always feel like I'm in Italy and picture Michelangelo. So I love listening to music while reading. I may not always get to do it because if I le read late at night I don't want to disturb anyone but, but uh, if I can I do listen to music while reading and I actually love to listen to the same music over and over so that it kind of creates a connection between the music and what I'm reading. The next one, it's all in the details. Choose five words that best describe your feelings toward book banning. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I have five words to describe that atrocity. <laughs> Uh, but I would use uh, crazy and um, absurd, but maybe tragic. Book banning is all about control and, uh, and who gets to decide what you read gets to control actually what you think. And that is very, very powerful. Do not forget Fahrenheit 451. Do not forget 1984. This thing is too powerful to be let alone. Book banning is awful and it must be stopped. The next one. It's never too late. Name a book with a villain turned good. So I'm not sure there is such a thing. Flossie named A Christmas Carol, but I haven't read that one. However, I don't have any idea of books that actually have bad people turning good. Um, I don't really believe in good and bad. I'd love to. I love the times I used to believe in good and bad when I was little, when all the, all the fairy tales had something so simple and pure as good versus evil. However, real life is far from that, so I think there are just people, sometimes broken, that do bad things. Sometimes people heal and start to do um, the most amazing things. Sometimes the guilt makes you do wonderful things. I think there is an example of that in Khaled Hosseini's book, The Kite Runner, where, where the protagonist's father is someone that has an affair, but then 
he acts so guilty about it that his guilt transforms him this guilt makes him build hospitals um, it makes him generous however i don't think cheating makes you an evil person i think it makes you just a person that made a mistake and yes you can't you can't repair that mistake but you can do other good things so i don't think people are perfect they are neither good nor bad they happen to do bad things or good things depending on their on their upbringing their circumstances their headspace in that moment that's kind of it the next one it's a matter of preference so throughout your reading journey what one specific do you enjoy tirelessly having described to you like hands food clothing well i really enjoy libraries i cannot get enough of uh, having uh, descriptions about people reading people going through library people seeing books um, feeling books reading i loved such a description in the shadow of the wind by carlos ruiz zafon i loved that kind of descriptions in uh, the book of form and emptiness by ruth ozeki i love those books for the kind of connection between people and books they show and they, they were just perfect that's a wrap name one book that you feel complete your physical audibly electronic or mental library <laughs> one book that i feel completes me is uh, an anthology by um, a lot of Romanian authors, I think they are 12, that collaborated in writing um, a lot of essays around being happy in Romania. This is not an anthology that is translated because it, uh, I don't think it even presents an interest to the public outside of Romania, but the essays are so wonderful they made me think a lot about romania about why i chose to come back here because i did live for a while i lived in spain for five years for example and i chose to come back and this book reminded me how romania has such a wonderful culture moving on lend a helping hand Recommend three booktube channels that need a boost in subscriptions and then go and subscribe to their channel. So, uh, I don't know if they actually need a boost in subscriptions because their numbers are always growing, of course. But these small booktubers are very good ones and I do actually recommend you go and subscribe to their channels. So these are Books at Midnight, which I just discovered yesterday. Uh, Marisa Bailey, who has the most awesome Philosophy Fridays videos. Those are so, so interesting. And Penguin Pages, who is, I think, still in high school. But uh, he is very, very enthusiastic about what he does and uh, i think that shows in his videos and another uh, very enthusiastic booktuber is sean holt so head over to his channel as well he is a writer and uh, has an awesome series about 1000 books to read those videos are so so good so head over to their channels and um, enjoy Tag three unique and enjoyable booktube personality to do this tag. Well, 
chce mají tak Shannon at Shannon Bookish Musings, Jolene at Bookworm Adventure Girl and uh, Joseph Francis Burton. These channels are amazing. Each one is different and has its own appeal and these people have all found their unique voices and have very very inspiring videos so head over to their channels and subscribe as well and i hope you do this tag of course no pressure but uh, i'm sure flossy at great jelly library would be uh, very happy to know you like her prompts thank you so much for watching i'm maria from read fine books have a wonderful day